Hi guys, Dr. J here. If you have kidney failure, you can live a decent life with either a kidney transplant or dialysis. But which is best? Let's learn. All right, here's a nice healthy kidney. But when you develop kidney failure, you have two choices to continue living, either dialysis or a transplanted kidney. Dialysis gives you incomplete kidney function and it makes you dependent on a machine. On the other hand, with a transplanted kidney, you get real kidney function, but you need major surgery and also you need to take drugs to prevent rejection. So, which is better? One way to compare two therapies for a disease is to see how long you live with each therapy, which is called survival. If you look here is percent survival, the other axis is year. And you can see that the survival on dialysis after 10 years is very low. On the other hand, it's much better following a deceased donor transplant or a living donor transplant. So you might say, well, can you really compare? Because dialysis patients in aggregate are probably not as healthy as transplant patients, and many dialysis patients can't get a transplant. So maybe it's an unfair comparison. Fair enough. In this study, they got around that, though. They took 220,000 or so dialysis patients, and then they took only the patients who were on the wait list. So these were all patients that were healthy enough to get a transplant. And then they looked at the effect of having a transplant, and there was a 68% reduction in the risk of death. So these were all patients that were on dialysis but healthy enough to undergo a transplant, and those that received a transplant reduced their risk of death. So in fact, there is a major survival advantage for transplant recipients, and this is not even controversial. So a transplanted kidney does lead to better survival, despite having to take drugs to prevent rejection and major surgery. What about quality of life? The biggest problem with dialysis that I see is fatigue. Patients complain of constant fatigue and they especially notice it after a transplant because suddenly it's like a veil is lifted. I think the reason this happens is dialysis is intermittent, whereas kidney function is normally continuous. So if you undergo dialysis, you have two, three days where the poisons gradually build up and choke your body. And then suddenly and abruptly, the poisons are removed. It's a little bit like you have a hangover after dialysis, and frequently dialysis patients, in fact, do sleep after dialysis, or they have headaches, and then they spend most of their life fatigued because these swings of poisons removed and accumulating is very stressful for the body. Another factor in the fatigue of kidney failure is that the kidneys stimulate the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So if you look at normal red cells under a microscope, people with kidney failure have anemia, a diminished number of red cells. And since the red cells carry oxygen for energy, anemia contributes to fatigue as well. So after a transplant, you have more energy. The other problem is the body tends to accumulate a lot of potassium, and under normal circumstances, the urine excretes the potassium. But with kidney failure, the potassium tends to accumulate because it is not excreted by the kidneys. So in between dialysis runs, the potassium can accumulate. If the potassium level reaches too high a level in the blood, this can lead to a deadly heart rhythm called ventricular fibrillation, which is frequently fatal. So when you're on dialysis, you have to restrict potassium in your diet. The problem is, is that the foods that are high in potassium are the heart healthy foods and the bowel healthy foods. So they allow your normal bowel function and they're very good for the heart. They're also good to prevent cancer. So basically the diet on dialysis is a difficult diet. On the other hand, after a transplant, you can eat anything you want within reason. So it's easier to eat after a transplant. Here is a typical connection between a patient and a dialysis machine. And let me draw your attention to this area where the blood is removed from the patient and brought to the machine and then returned to the patient from the machine. You need to bring the blood in and out of the machine. And that's what's called dialysis access, access to your blood. And there are many different options for access. You first typically start with a catheter because this can be used right away. But this is dangerous because it's a portal of entry for an infection into your bloodstream. And this can lead to severe problems. The best access is a fistula, which is a connection between a vein and the artery. But this too can lead to complications and very large accesses with large flows, frequently requiring multiple operations. So this is one of the problems with dialysis access is you don't need big surgery, but you need frequent little surgeries. It's easier to work if you have a transplant because dialysis is typically four hours, three times a week, for example, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning. So it's difficult to hold down a job with such a demanding dialysis schedule. It's also easier to travel. Imagine trying to book a, a trip to Paris on dialysis. You're gonna have to find a dialysis center in Paris that can keep you alive every other day, basically. 
so this is virtually impossible to travel. You perhaps can go to Florida and arrange for a dialysis unit, but even in that situation, dialysis units typically have patients and they're not readily available. So the best dialysis patients they can do is go on a cruise, which has a dialysis unit. But generally speaking, travel is very limited as a dialysis patient. So you have more energy with the transplant. It's easier to eat. It's easier to work. It's easier to travel. And that means you have much better quality of life with a transplant. So of the two choices, which is better? You live longer and you live better with a transplant kidney. And so almost everyone would say that a transplant kidney is better. And in fact, if you talk to patients who have experienced both, by far they consider the transplant kidney the best option.